That was really weak. Let's try it one more time. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome students, welcome parents and family and friends, loved ones. So glad to see such a packed house today. Uh, Acolytes, great job. Norm, great job with the dub. Only slightly disappointed more people didn't get hit in the face. Uh, nothing like the Holy Spirit dub in the face. So anyway, uh, welcome to those who are joining online this morning. Um, and Courtney, thanks for running the live stream. Let's all just take a deep breath, soak in this moment, and begin our Holy Eucharist. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, on this day you open the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel that it may reach to the ends of the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in their languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works, and wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. You send forth your spirit, and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure you forever. May the Lord reju reduce in all his works. He looks at the earth, and, and it trembles. He touches the mountains, and they smoke. And I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless, bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. A reading from John. Jesus said to his disciples, when the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me, yet none of you asked me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you who not to... Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father, and you will see me no longer. About judgment, because the ruler of the world has been commanded. I still have many things to say to you, but I cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of the truth comes, he will guide you into, the, into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I say that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The word of the Lord. Good morning. 
We are blessed this morning to have a number of special events, time-honored traditions at St. Andrews. And this morning, our first uh, main event is to bless our high school graduates. Um, we are so happy to have you back here today. Uh, you are a testament to the value of a St. Andrews education and all that you have accomplished and all that you will accomplish as you transition uh, to your college careers. I'm going to call each one by name. They're going to come on up. I'm going to say a few nice words about them. Uh, and then uh, Reverend Howes at the end is going to give a blessing uh, over all of them. Ryan Barnett. Ryan is son of Rachel and Rance Barnett and Tina Brolin. He's graduating from Tascosa High School. He will be playing football at Eastern New Mexico University. His fondest memory is the trip to Heifer Ranch and being one of the most hated villages there because of our attempts to steal. Four Bybee. Four is the son of Stephanie and Owen Bybee. He's graduating from Tascosa High School. He will be attending University of Texas at Austin. And his fondest memory is how great his teachers were and the great learning environment he was surrounded by. Dietrich Dixon. Dietrich is son of Amber and Monty Dixon. He is graduating from Ascension Academy. He will be attending Baylor University. And his fondest memory are the days at Heifer Village uh, with his classmates. Christiana Jackson. Christiana is the daughter of Tammy and Matt Jackson, graduating from Amarillo High School. She will be attending Texas A&M University. Her fondest memory was serving as an acolyte and participating in volunteer work with the school. Maddie Kellogg. Maddie is the daughter of Bonnie and Donnie Kellogg. She graduated from Amarillo High School in the winter of 2020. She is attending West Texas A&M University. And her fondest memory is winning the WTCAA Basketball and Volleyball Championships her eighth grade year. Rebecca Kilgore. Rebecca is the daughter of Mark Kilgore. She's graduating from Amarillo High School. She will be attending Texas Tech University. And her fondest memory is the class trip to Heifer. Madeline Leah daughter of Dr. Benjamin and Mrs. Robin Leah. She's graduating from Tascosa High School. She'll be attending Texas Tech University. Her fondest memory was visiting Heifer International in seventh grade. Olivia Lutz, daughter of Colin and John Lutz. She's graduating from Tascosa High School. She's attending Texas A&M University in the fall. Her fondest memory was kicking a long field goal so that the football team wouldn't have to do conditioning at the end of practice. Her coaches and teammates made her time playing football unforgettable. Will McCart. Will is the son of Sharissa and Colin McCart. He's graduating from Tascosa High School and will be attending Texas A&M University. His fondest memories were the middle school trips. Kieran O'Brien, daughter of Shannon and Blake O'Brien. Kieran is graduating from Tascosa High School and is attending the University of Virginia. Her fondest memory is the trip to Heifer. Trace Rowley. Trace is the son of Jeff and Christy Rowley. He's graduating from Tascosa High School and will be attending the NASCAR school through the Universal Techn Technical Institute. His fondest memory was the Colonial Village at Heifer and all of the fun projects he did with Madeline, Olivia, and Dietrich. Before the blessing, let's give them a round of applause, please.
Almighty God, Heavenly Father, you have blessed us with the joy and care of these before us. Bless them with calm strength and patient wisdom as they continue to grow, that they may know love, and that they may know whatever is just and true and good, following the example of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Our second time-honored tradition is eighth grade speeches. We are excited this morning to have our first round of eighth grade speeches. Could I have my first three speakers? Where are we at, Steve? Mr. Barnett, are you going to introduce them? As Mr. Bicknell said, a time-honored tradition of giving eighth grade speeches. Um, each student is tasked with giving an eighth grade speech at the end of their eighth grade uh, year to talk about their time uh, being here. Our first eighth grade speech in the first round is going to be John Moore. Welcome to my graduation speech. I'd like to open with some words of wisdom from my favorite philosopher, Snoopy. There's no sense in doing a lot of barking if you don't really have anything to say. If you were with me on our sixth grade class trip to Washington, D.C., you know that this is a good time to say, Huzzah! 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 I have so many happy memories of life as a St. Andrews student. The first time my preschool teacher said, Take out your crayons, please. To the last time, Senora Wilson said, Take out your homework, please. Good grief. The countless classes that the teachers made so fun and so interesting. The spelling bees, leading the singing in chapel, Papa Joel's pizza on Friday, the Charlie Brown Christmas play, snow days, Snoopy dance. Snoopy's best friend and human, Charlie Brown, says that a friend is someone who knows all your faults, but likes you anyway. I love the friendships I have shared with my fellow graduates. They are so supportive and always cheering for each other. I think everybody needs people in their life who cheer for them. I'm so glad you guys had my back all these years. I thank you for that from the bottom of my heart. Speaking of cheering, I want to say thank you to all my teachers who have always been so nice and supportive, and thanks for laughing at my jokes. One final shout out to my family, Mom, Dad, Preston, Emily, Grammy, and Papa. I could not have come this far without your constant support and encouragement. Thank you for believing in me. To my classmates, friends, family, teachers, and everyone else that made St. Andrews such a wonderful place for me to grow up, you guys are the best. I love you all so much. Since I can't imagine saying goodbye to all of you, I'll just say, see you later. I'll close with one more bit of wisdom from Snoopy. Learn from yesterday. Live for today. Look to tomorrow. Rest this afternoon. Huzzah! Our second speaker will be Sarah Schooley. I don't even know what to say. I have so many words I want to put on this paper, yet I can't get any of them to come out. I mean, I could talk about all the wonderful activities and events I've got to do, or I could talk about all my amazing friends. 
I could ramble on about the memories I've made, but I'm going to start with the teachers. The teachers here always made me feel welcomed and loved. I've always had a hard time coming out of my shell, and the teachers always understood that. Not only did they do that, but they also helped me, even when everyone else got it and I was still a bit confused. This time at St. Andrews would not have been the same without them. I've always loved chapel. I remember being so nervous, yet so excited to go to my first chapel. And after that, I tried all of first grade year to sit in the front row. I would clap along to every song, and I was probably really offbeat. And whenever I needed help with the hand signs, I would look over to the eighth graders. And it's crazy to think that I am now one of those eighth graders. The activities and events we have at St. Andrews have always been so much fun and left so many memories. I will share a few of my favorites. 100th day of school in kindergarten was just so amazing. I remember how excited I was to walk around with my little cane the whole day. It was such a fun experience. President's Day in second grade, I had gotten Ronald Reagan and spent the whole weekend perfecting my speech. I passed out jelly beans to everyone who pressed my button on my vest. I remember being so nervous. Any holiday party we had was always the best. It would include a creative game and some awesome snacks. Thanks to the parents for that. Another one of my favorite events was Fine Arts Night. I remember my first Fine Arts Night. It was so crazy to think that I would have my art on a museum wall and I would get to perform in a museum. I always look forward to that day. At St. Andrews, we've gone on many field trips, like to an art museum or to do some volunteer work. But my favorite field trip was a little bigger the sixth grade Washington DC trip. I was so excited to go on a week long trip with all of my friends, but I was very nervous. It would be my first time flying and the farthest I would ever be away from Amarillo and my family. Turns out flying's not so bad, especially when your friends are there. It was so much fun and I have so many memories that I will cherish and have forever. I know it seems crazy. I know it seems crazy. I was so scared to come to this school scared I wouldn't make friends, or scared it'd be boring. I had no reason to be scared. I have loved it here. I will never forget the people, the friends, the memories I've made here, but it's time for me to grow, and even though I will miss it so much, I must say goodbye. Thank you. Next up, Creed Barnes. All right. School is like a tree. You have to start with the roots. The roots are the most important part of the tree. If you put the roots in sand, your tree will fall. But if you put it in fertile soil, your tree will grow strong. I planted my roots at a different school in Lubbock, and then it's flourishing, and then it all changed. I yanked up my roots and moved them to St. Andrews. St. Andrews is where I started to grow the branches. Branches were me trying to figure out how to do stuff on my own in middle school and getting ready for high school, like you'll have to do things on your own. Like the simple things of turning in your homework or even doing your homework in time, or being ready for a test. Middle school is also where your tree starts becoming unique from the other trees. You could be an apple tree, weeping willow, silver birch, or even an eastern hemlock if you really want to. What I'm saying is there are a lot of different personalities to pick from. I had to go through three years here. I never really wanted to be at school, so I just got through the day with a bit of fun, and then I went to my favorite part of the day. That was athletics. Without athletics, I would despise school, but I knew it all be okay because after school, I go to athletics, so school isn't that bad anymore. From a bird's eye view, there are a lot of good moments, like six championships in two years, and the feeling of getting through a day on a Friday and going home for a weekend, but then I had to come back. I know I still have to go through high school, but at least I know I'll have the fundamentals from SAS to get me through. I have no idea what might happen in the future, but I really don't care, because I know my roots are planted in good dirt and nothing can push me down now.
Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We thank you, Lord, for all schools, their faculty, and families, particularly for the community of St. Andrew's School, our students, parents, faculty, and staff, especially Mr. Bicknell, our head of school, and Mrs. Gable, our assistant head. Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we thank you for the gift of rain on our pastures and our fields. We lift to your loving care Terry Bentley and her family, Heather Cunningham and her family, Sam, Judy, Spencer, and Sydney, Linda, Robert, PJ, Laverne, Kenneth, and Martha, Jana, Brenda, Rodney, Arden, Harlan, Marcy, Penny, Hazel, Laurel, Cupcake the Horse, Titan, Taylor, Emery, Gina, Andrew, Wendy, Nolan, Aunt Julie, Kay, and Jackson, bring him home. Be with them, Lord, and send your Holy Spirit to nourish them with patience, comfort them with goodness, and grant them your peace. Amen. Dear Lord, God above, our Father and Protector, Bless St. Andrew's Episcopal School and bless the children in it. Protect them as they grow into men and women. Guide them to the light and show them your way. You, Lord, are the light and the way. Bring happiness and joy to our wonderful school. In Jesus' almighty and powerful name we pray. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. You may be seated. Our next two eighth grade speeches are brought to us from Caroline Rush and Shepard Stapp. Life brings tears, smiles, and memories. The tears dry, the smiles fade, but the memories last forever. Because of my friends, teachers, family, I have so many amazing memories. From singing songs in chapel to painting blue dogs in art, from building toothpick bridges to building friendships, I'm thanking God for all of it. I'm so thankful for all the friendships I have made here and how we all work so well together. I remember when we all planned a retirement party for the teachers that were leaving, when we all celebrated each other's birthdays and holidays together. I will miss walking into school each morning to the same smiling faces. We have been through so many things together, even a pandemic. We've read so many books, watched so many movies, been in so many plays, had so many parties, made so many memories. I'm so thankful I've been surrounded by the most amazing group of people. I am sad to leave the people that have the kindest hearts and have helped me learn how to serve others with a smile. I owe miss everything at St. Andrews from in first grade when Miss Ferguson was with us at the lunch table to in second grade when we looked for real estate in Africa for a day. From watching Reading Rainbow in library to all of Miss Hammond's musicals, elementary was great. I remember writing my autobiography in fifth grade and thinking that by the time I leave St. Andrews, I'd have so many more amazing stories to write down, and I do, but I could never list them all. 
One of my favorite memories in middle school is going to Washington, D.C. We had so many great experiences that helped us get closer together as a grade. Walking through Jamestown and Williamsburg, driving to hotels, even just going through the airport, we didn't care what we did, we just enjoyed being with each other. We lived every moment to the fullest, and we were able to laugh when we got stuck in the Air and Space Museum because of the rain, or when we stayed in a hotel with bugs and ghosts. I can't wait for our next adventure at the Grand Canyon. Another thing I loved at St. Andrews is playing tennis. It has taught me to work hard and get better all the time. I love playing and practicing with all my friends. We had so much fun together, and they taught me to always give glory to God. Someone once wrote, there are no happy endings. Endings are the saddest part. So just give me a happy middle and give me a very happy start. Thanks to St. Andrews, I have a very happy start. The happy endings are the beginnings to a million new stories. We have a bunch of stories we have learned together and we have grown in our faith. I'm sad to leave, but I know that God has amazing plans for all of us. I'm so happy I have a place that's so hard to say goodbye to. So whatever you do, do all for the glory of God. 1 Corinthians 10.31. Ability is what you're capable of doing, motivation determines what you do, and attitude determines how well you do it. Lou Holtz. Hi, I'm Shepard. I've been at St. Andrews for all 11 years, from preschool with Miss Gable to middle school with Mr. Greywonder. The first eight years in preschool and elementary were pretty perfect, but the last three have been more of a challenge. I've had some really fantastic experiences, as well as some more difficult ones. Some of my greatest memories in middle school at St. Andrews were during athletics in seventh grade when we won football and basketball championships, and in eighth grade when we won football, basketball, and track championships. It was great to be able to grow up and play sports with the same group of kids from Kids Inc. through middle school. Now some of the more challenging times. In sixth grade, my grandmother passed away during our basketball season, and I took it pretty hard. And trying to deal with that took some time, but it's still, and it's still not normal without her, and not a day goes by we don't miss her, but we know she's in a better place and out of pain. Then COVID came at the end of seventh grade, and we started going online, and it really stressed me out not being able to be in person and ask questions and get a direct answer, so I was tired of online learning. It made me appreciate being in the classroom, which I used to take for granted. Some of the things we did in COVID included riding bikes around the neighborhood and playing baseball as well as building a new fence in our backyard and putting in a new sprinkler system with the help of our friend Jimmy Throckmorton, who never seemed to get tired or even eat in the four days we accomplished this. I was ready for high school by eighth grade and ready to take the next steps in my life. And I didn't want to need, wait another year, but I'm so glad I did because I would not have had all these great experiences with my classmates and teachers. This year, I did something I did not want to do, the play for To Kill Mockingbird. But I told Ms. McBride I'd help her. I asked for a small role if that was okay and received a much larger role. And that was something I did not prepare for. In the long run, I'm glad I could help her out and experience that myself. I just wanna thank my dad, Daniel Bradley, and Chris Morrow for coaching us through elementary and making us better athletes. Learning how to win and play together as a team helped contribute to our success in sports over the past few years. I wanna thank Ms. Kay for seeing the best in me even when I did not deserve it. I just want to thank my parents for supporting me in all I do, such as coming to my sporting events and cheering me on in anything I did, as well as sending me to this school so I could have an amazing head start in my education. Thank you. Now I'd like to invite uh, to the front here anybody who's celebrating a birthday along with parents. If you'd like to join your kiddo up here, that'd be great.
Somewhere. <laughs> Buddy, what's your name? You know what? Nice to meet you. How old are you going to be? Now we're 13. Okay. Get closer. <laughs> Wonder Girl, there we go. All right. What's your name? Nice to meet you. How old are you going to be? Okay. Take a pull up with your partner. How old are you going to be? Partner. 12. Okay. Poor brother. Is he nice to you? Does he, he, no, he's not. She said no. She said no. Well, thank you for being so gracious up here. Everybody, what's your name? Andrew. Andrew, nice to meet you. How old are you going to be, Andrew? 14. 14. All right. And our final two eighth grade speeches come from Grace Middlemiss and Joe Bybee.
You don't really know how attached you are until you move away, until you've experienced what it means to be dislodged, a cork floating on the ocean of another place. Michelle Obama. <sighs> Leaving St. Andrews and even running my eighth grade speech has always been something that I knew I would have to do, but I never really thought the day would come. Maybe I just thought it was too far away to worry about. But here I am about to leave one of the most important places in my life. I found a family here and I can't imagine leaving it. For me, St. Andrews has been about experiences, like trying new things, making new friends, and going to new places. I have tried quite a few things in my time here, but the one I, that I remember most is golf. I played golf in sixth grade. And let me just tell you, big mistake. It's not a bad program, it just wasn't for me. To this day, I still have no idea how to keep score or how to swim my club properly. When I played in tournaments, I think everyone just felt sorry for me. But I still contribu contributed to the team. The girls team only had three people besides me and they needed four to play, so that meant I couldn't drop out without letting everyone down. I stayed on the team and it ended up working out. They would drop the lowest score, which was mine, and it didn't even count. I had fun and it was a new experience that I will never forget. I made a lot of friends when I first came to St. Andrews, but it's always hard to start a new school and when I got here, I was terrified. But once I walked into my classroom, people immediately started talking to me. I made a lot of friends on the first day and they are still my really good friends now. I remember going home that day and talking all about the new friends I had made and what we had done. This was impressive because I was not very talkative when I was little. I've had an amazing group of people to learn and grow with, and I love all the friends I've made here. They have turned me into the person I am today and inspired me to do things that I never thought I would do. We have been to a few places as a class, but the most memorable one was our sixth grade trip to DC. It was very eventful. First, we went to Virginia where we visited Jamestown and Williamsburg. In Jamestown, there were teepees and a lot of chickens everywhere. We also watched them firing cannons. I don't think my ears have ever been the same. After that, we went to Williamsburg, where they had a lot of stores and shops and so many gardens and flowers that I couldn't even count. I loved all of the old buildings. I had a fun time at both, but I preferred Williamsburg. After that, we went to D.C., where we stayed at an interesting hotel. We went to a lot of museums and saw what felt like all of the monuments. All in all, I really enjoyed our D.C. trip, and it was a great place to make more memories and have new experiences. Leaving St. Andrews is going to be hard. I'll have to leave my friends and family teachers that I've known for most of my life. But even though I'm leaving St. Andrews behind, I will solve all the memories I, that we have shared over the years. I'm hoping I can take my experiences into high school and try new things, make new friends, and go to new places. My time here at St. Andrews has been like a round of golf. There's been a roller coaster of ups and downs and you never know what is to come. My round of golf started at St. Andrews and I was dropped off on the first day of Primer. Nobody ever remembers anything from Primer, but I do remember the one time I poured a whole cup of water in the trash instead of the sink. Let's just say that my teacher didn't like that very much. Primer was the first hole of the round and all you have to do is get through it. After the first hole, I went on to pre-K. Pre-K was like a par three, and it might have been the fastest school year of my life, but I learned to read a few things and how to write, so it was pretty fun for a four-year-old. Then came the big par five of kindergarten. So much happened in kindergarten. I remember them making us read after recess, and that was like hitting your ball in the water after the tee shot. <laughs> but then things got better. It was like I hit my next shot on the green, and I was back in it. Fun things started happening like the 100th day of school. Chinese New Year, and Balloonomania. I made great memories in kindergarten, but it was time for a new chapter. Moving on to first grade was like playing my first ever full round of golf. So many letters and numbers were just thrown into my face for some, for some reason, though I was enjoying it. Just as long as you got to have recess on the big field. The field is a game changer compared to the playground. We got to play games of football, and there were just way more things to do. I moved on quickly to the next hole. Second grade might have been one of the, of the most fun years of my time at St. Andrews. Ms. Copeland always found a way to make things interesting. It was always who could get the highest score in extra math, or how many birthday spankings we would get, or who gets to massage her back while she would read to us. <laughs> I don't know why we found these things to be so much fun, but they were. 
We also got to dress up as the U.S. presidents and tell about what they did for the country. Next, it was time to move up to third grade. Moving up to third grade was a big leap from downstairs. Third grade is when things got more challenging for me. It was like the holes got longer, the days would go slower, and we would do more work. We'd always take time math tests, and my friends and I would have competitions on who could finish first. Those little tests got pretty competitive sometimes. We would also always try to get on Miss Wright's beanbag, but we'd usually get kicked off. Soon I was packing up and getting ready for fourth grade. Fourth grade is like a short par four. It went by fast. The thing I looked forward to in fourth grade most at the end of the year was going to Wonderland. But fourth grade was also a year of getting basics down for what we would need in middle school. After the short year of fourth grade, it was time for the year of big preparation in, in fifth grade. We started doing harder work and really had to focus more. One fun thing I remember is that we got to go to the Polidori Canyon with Margaret Wills and we had a blast year. We got to learn about the canyon, but we also got to meet new people. After I ended fifth grade, the big scary hole came where you had to hit over water and just hope that you walked out of it with a bogey. Sixth grade is like the first grade again, but times 10. It was challenging, but I got through it and learned so much. I finally got to participate in school sports and sports brought my friends and I closer. We also learned how to work as a team. The next part of sixth grade is that we got to go to Washington, D.C. We saw all the cool monuments and it was a great learning experience. One of my favorite things is when we went to the Vietnam Veterans Memorial and we got to scratch the name of the person that we had been researching. Soon after the DC trip, it was time for seventh grade. My seventh grade year was a little different from others. Everything started off great. We won the boys basketball championship and football. The year looked great and then it all changed. We went on spring break and never came back. I don't really need to explain why because everybody knows why. We soon switched to online school, and my friends and I thought that online school was the best. We'd finish our work by noon and then go hang out or play golf together. It was like we had a six month long summer. Seventh grade is probably one of the best years for me, but maybe not others. Soon I was on the 18th hole. Eighth grade has flown by. It has been all gas, no breaks. We will soon, be, we will soon go on our class trip to the Grand Canyon, and I can't wait to finish the round of 18 off strong at St. Andrews. Just as I'm walking up to the 18th green, I just want to thank all of the people that have gotten me through St. Andrews and all of the people that have gone through the journey with me. Thank you. Walk in love as Christ first loved us and gave himself up for us and offering and sacrifice to God.
invite everyone to stand and invite our acolytes to join me around the altar. Continue our celebration of the Holy Eucharist with the great thanksgiving prayer A. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. In fulfillment of his true promise, the Holy Spirit came down from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith, and giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints to the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, on, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God.
bulletin sheet. Let us pray the post communion prayer together. Faithful God, in the wonder of your wisdom and love, you fed your people in the wilderness with the bread of angels, and you sent Jesus to be the bread of life. Though many of us have not consumed these gifts of bread and wine, we thank you that we have all received the sacrament of Christ's presence, the forgiveness of sins, and all other benefits of Christ's passion. Grant that we may continue forever in the risen life of our Savior, who with you in the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing in the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again through our doors. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. Rejoicing in the power of the Spirit.